Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways so that sinners will return back to you. That's the 51st Psalm verses 12 and 13 out of the New International Version. Good morning to all of you thriving people of God. My name is Pastor Enrique Brooks of Thrive Church and welcome to the Prayer 365 podcast, a man where we look to transform lives through the lifestyle of prayer. And guess what day it is, y'all? We celebrate that it is finally our TGIF. Say it with me. Thank God I am free because thank God I am forgiven and thank God it is Friday. Yes, you have chosen such a powerful way to start your day by holding fast to your commitment to pray. And we believe at Thrive, a church that prays together is a church that will indeed thrive together. And so we celebrate your presence with us today. Now, listen, before we dive into our devotion, I want to take a quick moment and invite you Um, to a couple of things that are happening this weekend. So first thing first is that the prayer does continue. Yes, we pray on every single day of the year. Amen. Monday through Friday, we do this prayer and devotion at 6.30 a.m. And then we take it on onto Saturday and we break open a more intense or fervent style of prayer. And that's what we call prayer at the altar. Amen. Intercessory prayer. So I do invite you to join us tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time uh, for prayer at the altar. And then on Sunday, we have our Sunday worship experience. That's at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, for both of these, you can join us on our Thrive Church page. Um, You can look it up either on Facebook or on YouTube or go to our website at thrive.church and you'll see the link right there to watch live. Amen. And so um, let's go ahead and lean on in into our devotion. Amen. We've had such a powerful week of prayer and devotion this week. As a matter of fact, before I do that, I do want to lift this up. This is important. Um, How can we pray for you? You know, I I mentioned that we're doing prayer at the altar tomorrow. Um, If you have a prayer request, I want you to take a moment and submit your prayer request at thrive.church forward slash prayer. 365. Again, you go to thrive.church forward slash prayer 365 to submit your prayer requests. If you have our mobile app, the Thrive Church mobile app, you can submit your prayer requests there as well. All right. So let's go ahead and, and dive on in here. We've had a great week of prayer and devotion, really. Um, starting out on Sunday was a powerful message that talked about the promise of forgiveness. And I just want to remind us of this really quickly, that the promise of forgiveness is this, that God will provide anyone who believes in his son. He'll provide any he'll excuse me. He'll forgive anyone. Provide my goodness. He'll provide forgiveness. Yes. To anyone who believes in in his son and also forgives others amen his love is unconditional but his forgiveness does require that we forgive others amen and then let's move on a little further here so that really leaned us into this need for repentance amen so this week we looked at looked at the principle of repentance which says that regular repentance meaning the turning of the heart to god it keeps us aware of our imperfection in our flesh and the absolute need of god's love his grace his wisdom and his strength we need him amen absolutely we need him and so therefore the theme for this week has been the heart of repentance i want you to say that aloud say i have a heart of repentance amen we've been working through this we've been praying through this all the week long because we understand that the heart of repentance has certain characteristics or attributes the first thing that we lifted up on monday is that the heart of repentance is a heart that is humble 
Yes, the heart of repentance is a heart that is humble. There is no pride in repentance. You cannot be prideful and repent at the same time. No, there has to be humility in our turning of the heart towards God, as well as that changing of our mind. Yes. And then day two or Tuesday, we said that a, a, a heart of repentance is a honest heart. Yes, a repentant heart is an honest heart. Heart, meaning that I've got to be real when I come to God. I can't try to sugarcoat or beat around the bush or hide or only bring what's comfortable to him. No, I've got to be honest. I've got to be real in the fact that, hey, I messed up. I fell short of your glory and I need your help. Amen. And then on Wednesday, we lifted up that a repentant heart is a broken heart heart. God desires uh, not necessarily our sin offerings um, or burn offerings. No, no, no. What he wants above anything else is a broken spirit and a contrite heart. Yes. And just to remind us, all of these um, attributes we find in the 51st Psalm, that's what we've been walking through, amen, or jumping around in throughout this week and, and finding those, those, those attributes, those key attributes of repentance in that psalm by David. And then yesterday, we said that a repentant heart is a heart that is restored. Amen. David said, restore to me the joy of my salvation. Amen. And so today, as we close out this powerful week of devotion and prayer, I want you to know that the heart of repentance is a heart that is productive, my brothers and sisters. A repentant heart is a productive heart, my brothers and sisters. So let's look back at this again. Let's look at the 51st Psalm and read how we got here, right? So we look at verse 12, and David says this. He said, God, restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. So he knew that he could not do this without God. But watch what he said after this in verse 13. He said, then I will teach transgressors your ways so that sinners will turn back to you. Hold up. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me, David, that you're you're sitting up here repenting to God and you're saying that if God will restore you, that you're going to turn around and begin to teach transgressors. In other words, teach other sinners about the ways of God. This is what he's saying. This is what he's saying that he would do. So in other words, what we find out here is that a heart of repentance is a heart that can produce my brothers and sisters. A heart of repentance is a heart that can produce. It can. It absolutely can. And so let's look here. Why does that even make sense? If you remember back when John was baptizing, when John, John the Baptist was baptizing before he baptized Jesus, he had some Pharisees that came his way and he looked at them and called them, you brood of vipers and this and that. I mean, he went off on them. Why are you coming up here? He said, don't don't just come up here and do the act of getting baptized. He said, no, produce fruits in keeping with repentance. Yes, because baptism is a demonstration of repentance. We get baptized to show outwardly our repentance. But he said, don't just do it for the show. No, you need to produce fruit in keeping with your repentance. In other words, if you've repented, show me some fruit that goes along with your repentance. You see, it's not enough. That's why I said before, my brothers and sisters, that repentance is not an apology. No, repentance is so much more. It is the turning of the heart back towards God. It is a posture of humility, saying that, God, I need you in every way. And so essentially, he's letting us know that, again, a heart that is repentant is a heart that is productive. What's so good about this, my brothers and sisters, is that what we can learn from David is that instead of laying in the stain of his failure or in the stain of his sin, it's through repentance that he took that horrible situation and he said, I'm going to leverage this 
I'm not just going to simply wallow in my in my in my pity, so to speak. I'm not going to going to sit up here and whine and cry for forever and a day. He said, no, I'm going to take this moment and I'm going to teach somebody else about the things of God. Oh, wow. What are the experiences that you have had, whether it be sin related or whether it be a season of crushing that you've gone through that you have been ashamed of and been putting off to the side? I want you to go. I want you to go in your brain. I want you to find it. I want you to pick it up. I want you to dust it off. I want you to do all of that. And I want you to realize that that very thing that you didn't never want to think about again, that you've been hiding off to the side, that understand that all things, oh, come on here, Paul, uh, work together for the good of them that love God to them that are called according to your purpose. So therefore, God has given you purpose. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. And so he is so masterful that he'll teach you how to take the very thing that brought shame in your life to now bring to bring fruit in the lives of others oh my goodness a heart of repentance is a heart that can produce what are you producing in your repentance what are you producing and you turning your heart towards God it's not for you to just stay in shame it's not for you to sweep it under the rug and never say oh God you threw that in a sea of forgetfulness yes he did but there's a song that we used to sing I believe when we were at St. Mark y'all know I've been talking about St. Mark this week we would say never shall forget what you've done for me or Jesus I'll never forget how you set me free Jesus I'll never forget how you brought me out no 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 never my goodness why i don't ever want to forget what you did for me because i need to testify of the goodness of the lord oh come on here because they overcame him by the blood of the lamb yes the devil the adversary and the word of their testimony and love not their lives unto death you've got to produce something in your repentance we've got to produce something out of what we've experienced what we've gone through we've got to share it with somebody we've got to let them know hey baby don't go down that road i've been down that road i i I got the scars to prove it but i also hallelujah have the win and the victory to show you that god will still bring you out of it but you don't have to travel that road or perhaps somebody who's in it somebody who's battling cancer somebody who's going through it multiple times somebody who's struggling with diabetes they're talking about limbs being removed somebody who's dealing with high blood pressure somebody who's dealing with dialysis somebody who's dealing with multiple sclerosis whatever it may be or somebody who's dealing with a tough marriage you have the ability to take that thing that you thought was going to simply bring shame in your life and now you can leverage it not for manipulation but for victory you can leverage it to help somebody else i want to pray for you today amen it's been a powerful week of prayer powerful week of devotion as we've been walking through how yes to capture and walk in a heart of repentance a heart of repentance is one my brothers and sisters that is humble it's one that is honest it's one that's broken it's one that's restored and after all of that now it's time to produce Let's pray. Father, we praise you today. We magnify your name. Yes, God. We say as the as the songwriter said, said, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Father, we choose to magnify or make big your goodness, not our trouble, not our past, not our trauma or our failures or our shame no father we won't make those things big ever again but father we magnify you father we make your name big in the earth 
And Father, we thank you that throughout this week, Father, you've taught us how to be humble. You've taught us how to be honest. You've taught us how to walk in brokenness so that we can experience the restoration that comes through repentance. So Father, forgive us of our sins. Father, we confess that we have fallen short of the glory of God. But Father, we know that you are faithful and you are just to not only forgive us, but to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And Father, we give you praise for that. Father, thank you for keeping us throughout this week. Thank you for, for helping us to not only meet, but exceed our goals. Father, you have been so good to us and we can't thank you enough. But Father, as we close out this week, Father, it is our prayer today that we would produce fruit in keeping with repentance. That Father, we won't just go hallelujah through the motions of confession, but Father, we will produce fruit in our repentance, in our posture of humility towards you. Because God, there's somebody that we can help. There's somebody that we can teach. There's a book that'll come out of that story. Father, there is something that will be produced out of what we went through. Because God, you are so masterful to say that all things work together. For the good of them that love God To them that are called according to your purpose Father we love you And Father we know that you made us for purpose And Father we, we submit to the call of your purpose And as we close out this prayer We pray the way that Jesus taught us to pray And we say our Father who art in heaven Holy is your name Thy kingdom come Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven And Lord give us this day our daily bread and God forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors father lead us not into temptation but deliver us from the hand of the evil one for yours is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and all of God's children say amen God bless you all my name is pastor Enrique Brooks here of, of the prayer 365 podcast amen and of thrive church remember this here God did not make you to simply get by he didn't make you to just barely make it, nor to struggle or strive, but God created you to thrive. Amen. I look forward to seeing you this week, this weekend, amen, for prayer at the altar at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and for our Sunday worship experience at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I love each of you. God bless you. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.